Hello there, amazing people. This is the first kind of pilot of what you would call it. I, I wanted to do a podcast for the longest time. So I thought now that YouTube are giving us a specific tab for podcasts. So why not do this? So this would just be me talking about my stream Steam account. I've been having this for longer than I want to admit. So I'm going to show you guys all of the games I have in there. I know you can't see some of them because of this TDP and this is it will be tech and tech is related. I hope I can get guests on and stuff like that. It will be edited but not highly edited. It's a little bit of, of uh, what I do on my live stream just you know I want to have a, a, a forum where I can be a little bit more in control. In live streams you can't really be that much in control. Here I can be more in control and also I really really for the longest time have wanted to, to interview other people because I love talking to other people just never really found a way of doing it so the the CDP podcast or the terminal design podcast podcast <laughs> is my way of doing it if you hate the the name I'm open for other names this is just like an idea a project uh intro to it and stuff like that as you see up there social media be be links below to my uh, discord and other avenues I'm on I'm on Instagram it's more a personal working out kind of thing when I decide to post there again Twitter I'm not really that active on it but you know, you have to have Twitter when you're on YouTube. And of course, my YouTube channel have a gaming channel that I need to upload to also. But sick me into this here. My good old Steam account. And you can kind of see here, I, I only have a one terabyte SSD installed right now. Because I wanted to go away from S uh, for spinning hard drives. And I couldn't afford a full clone 2 plus terabyte SSD. So these are the games I've been playing the most lately. Yes, I'm getting really, really into Cyberpunk again, and this Project Zomboid is actually a really, really amazing game. I, I spent way too much time on it. I'm also on Xbox, have the Xbox, whatever. I I'm, I'm, don't own an Xbox, but I'm on the Xbox uh, Pass, I think it's called, because uh, there's some games that I like. I like trying, uh, I like using it a way to try games that is on there that I'm like, I may not buy them. So I try them, and then if I like them, I buy them. I, I, that's how I got Farming Simulator, so I just bought it on there, because because I liked it on there, but I, I also have, you know, um, EA and Ubisoft launch, you know, we I have all the, if, if there's a gaming launch out there, I probably have it, I'm probably on it. Um, and this is the ones that I, uh, no, this is not the ones that I install right now. So you can see the ones that I install right now have Cyberpunk, Elite Dangerous, I just really started, I just started to play Elite Dangerous again. Elite Dangerous for me is a game that I play on and off. I really, really like it, but I also get, it's a little bit like, far, uh, not Farming Simulator, uh, Your Truck Simulator. I play it, get tired of it, play it again, get tired of it and stuff like that. Factorio, I really, really like Queen Hell and, and New World. Like Queen Hell, I install it, but haven't really played it. So just New World is kind of like slowly become my World of Warcraft replacement. I don't know, after play, after stop playing World of Warcraft when the whole debacle came about and going into playing Final Fantasy, New World and a lot of the newer generation of... of uh, MMOs, World of Warcraft starts to feel outdated to me. It has its charm, it, it, it's, it's, like I have a history, I started in Wrath of the, no, no not Wrath, uh, Cataclysm, like the last part, like the last six months of Cataclysm, I got my very, very, very first World of Warcraft box, I actually have it up there. Well, it's not the first one I got, I got the battle chest, and I installed it, played it for like 10 minutes. And that's fucking it, I'm out of here. Then I bought the, bought the Cataclysm Collector's Edition, I still have the box up there. There's some st stuff missing, but I still have it up there. And I've basically been playing World of Warcraft almost non-stop. Had some like months and six months gaps here and there. Up till, you know, the whole debacle came about where I just cancelled my subscription. And I actually didn't have a subscription up uh, after that, I don't think so anyway. And then I, I realized when the, uh, this new expansion came out that I have enough gold to basically buy a, a subscription token with my goal so i did that and played it quite a lot and i do like the new expansion but just the whole the whole mechanics behind it the feel of it the way that it works and the way that it plays just feel outdated compared to final fantasy new world and all these and there's a lot of new mmos coming out that are really 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 interesting so i don't know if i'm going back to world of warcraft i have pro again project Zomboid. i love that game i it's, it's i bought it this month and it's in the beginning, it's really unforgiving forgiving and really like difficult, I would say, but it's also and frustrated. But then you start to get into it and you, you add some mods and stuff like that. And it's strangely fucking good. Uh, Rocksmith playing guitar. I need to play this more, but I have almost thousands of hours in it. I had it for 
a long time. Since 2015, I think I got it, something like that. I love playing the guitar, I just need to do it more. A Daisy, I used to not play this so much and I want to get back into it, but I just never seem to be able to get back into DayZ when it became standalone. I played it when, you know, Rocket or what his name was started to developing it, like when it was an Armor 2 mod, Armor 2 L expansion thing you needed. And me and some friends, we played it. I, I probably have 1,000 to 2,000 hours in, in, um, they see like the original they see mod and uh wasteland armor another armor mod combined i love that aspect of but the whole they see it become too much micromanagement like you, you you were not focusing on surviving you were focusing on micromanaging your survive and yes to some extent you do that in real life but you don't sit and micromanage your life when you're trying to survive it's kind of the same problem have with, with scum like you don't sit and micromanage your fucking vitamin intake when you're out in survival instances i've been doing that i've been i you know i've been in the army we did stuff like that you just have to eat your fucking food and then you got the basis of what you need you know people have been living in the wild and surviving without micro analyzing their micros in in real life you know it, it's just too taking a fucking shit it's too much for me and daisy kind of went down to that route where you had to micromanage every fucking thing just to to, to be able to walk basically and it was like that's not how we do it in the real world i've been doing do, i've done this in the real world surviving in the wilderness with no food you know you kill an animal you eat an animal you get some fucking water in you that's it the only thing you care about is getting your fucking calorie ca calories intake up you know, making sure that you have enough calories to not basically pass out from exhaustion. And that's kind of it. You know, you eat some greens, you eat some meat, and that's it. That's all you need. You get all your bases covered there. I'm not saying that you can live like 100 years and a healthy life, but you can survive. And that's what it, 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 it it's about. Uh, Miss Survival, I got back into that. Watching some people on YouTube playing it, like the latest update. It's actually a really, really good game. No Man's Sky, I kind of wanted to try it with the ARC CPU. But for some reason, 4K and, and No Man's Sky and the ARC CPU is a little bit... It's I don't know what it is, but it seems unoptimized for 4K. Uh, not 4K, 1440p or something. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's using unrealistically high resources a uh, scum again watching some people playing the latest uh, updates on it and i'm like they are not micromanaging themselves as much maybe i should try and play it again but it, it, it is it has become way better and it's a good they see alternative and i do like playing it but this whole like managing your metabolism and magnesium and all that fucking shit it, again you are micromanaging your character just to make sure that he gets out of bed or, or he can actually walk from a to b or that he, he he just are able to carry like a fucking loaf of bread that's not how it is in real life yes you need your vitamins you need your minerals but if you just eat fucking red meat once in a while or meat in general once in a while you eat some greens once in a while you're covered like you can live and you can live kind of healthy like that like i said when, when i was you know exercise on exercise we didn't have a fucking nutritionist running around our ass taking our fucking plot every day to see if our micronutrition was in order for us to go into fucking battle exercises no did you eat your fucking you know mre yeah you're good if you didn't have M mre did you eat some meat and, and and vegetables like did you find something in the white yeah you're good you know that it's too much man junkyard simulator i bought that because i used to play a game like way back in the 90s i think it was that was kind of like this where you had to take a car take it apart meant the basically car mechanics basically nowadays and i kind of want to support this uh, endeavor here uh, the planet craft is actually a really really good game i'm i'm trying not to play uh, not play but buy early access game and i kind of jumped in with this one here and i i'm mostly because it was dirt ass fucking cheap and um I'm not disappointed. So yeah, I don't buy uh, early access games, or I rarely do. Back in the day, like three years ago, I bought almost any pre-release or not pre-release, early access game if I thought I liked it. And it's just not for me anymore. I'm, I'm got, I got disappointment too ma disappointed too many times. So my favorites, the, the games that I like to play the most are the games that I, that I, I'll go on. I have so fucking many games. I don't know. Can I see how many games I have? I have uh, all games. I can't, can I even see how many games I have in total? 300 plus 2 plus 36 plus 124 plus 20 plus uh, 46 plus 7. That's all the games I have. But I want to talk about just my favorites right now. And then we can go into some of the other categories. And I would just 
go really over them. Some of them I will talk about, some of them I won't talk about. Just for the sake of making this video not way too long. But that's kind of the idea with a podcast is that it's long. So we may go really, really ham and in depth with it and stuff like that. But Seven Days to Die, I used to play it, like, play it quite often. Like I have like 54 plus hour, or 54.3 hours in it. It's lost its charm for me. And it's one of those games, I think it's still in early access, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's still in early access and it's been for 10 years. It's too fucking much. Just call it a rolling release or never finished release or something like that. You know, call it something else than early access because I don't think it will ever be released in full 1.0 state. Then call, call it a, a continuous development game or something like that. Uh, this one here is actually really good, really relaxing game. Uh, the Age of Decadence, I think, is, is also a really, really good game. I haven't played it most, played it in other platforms. Some of the games you may see that I have that I that I uh, almost no playtime on, I play, that means that I probably played them in other platforms or in other places, or I bought them just to support the developers because I, I like them, or I got them as part of a bundle. So it's one of those things. American Truck Simulator, I used to really, really like trucking. The problem is that I have to have something beside me going on, like a, a video or Netflix, something like that or else i will well, facepalm my desk i fall asleep just trucking and i'm and normally too i think this, i got this in in a bundle and i don't know wh why i put it as as a favorite now i'm thinking about i think i've played it in another platform before another brick in the mall it's a really really good little casual game about you know managing a mall complex and i actually should install this because i really really do like it i like management games strategy and management games are really really fun to me i love managing stuff not not micromanage but manage stuff uh, a r e s is also a really really good game i actually think i finished this one assassin's creed black flag need i say more astronea a good fun little casual space exploration game astrox kind of okay I don't know why it's up in favorite. Some of the games, I think I just favored them a long time ago. I forgot why I did it. I, you see, this one here I haven't played since 2019. Banished, again, it's a city building game. And I lo again, I love management games, not micromanager again, where you have to fucking manage, you know, the, the left toe of every fucking inhabitants of my city or how often they take a shit. But it's a really, really good game. And I don't think this has been developed anymore. They moved on to other things, but it's a really, it's a good game that is the right mix of simulating that you have to be on point versus that you can sit and 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 play it while you are basically watching youtube and stuff like that you can let kind of let it be played in the background besides it's a fun game man big farm again goes in with another pick in the mall a little bit of a management kind of style building stuff merging stuff i, I like it black desert is one of the mmos that i really really like playing haven't played it in well two years now i should get back into it but it, I, I, it's one of those games where i play it for a while and i don't play it and stuff like that black maze is probably the if you want half life life one be envisioned in a new updated way it, this is like black maze is probably i would say it's better than fucking half life one it's an amazingly good game black squad i used to love playing this for a short while car mechanic simulator again this is a game i played on other platforms and i really really love it city skylines city builder i mean uh, almost no matter how fucking bad a city builder is i mean cyberpunk for all of the fucking box that's in the game still it's actually a really good game now if they release cyberpunk last year it would have been one of the best games released to be honest even with the fucking box because it's it's it could be optimized better, but most of the, the, the box are done, at least in the main missions for me and stuff like that. And I just love driving around on a fucking bike and doing random missions and just being immersed into Night City. That's one thing that these developers are really, really good at CD Projekt Red. I was really, really good at. They're really good at building immersive environments. That's also what I loved about The Witcher, just riding along in the environment and then doing missions here and then not, not having anything to do other than just being in the environment and then letting the environment do its random things and then you in that, uh, basically reacting to it. I love games like that where you can just go in and be like, what do I want to do today? And you don't have a path lay in front of you. And while you're going towards doing something, some other things may pop up that they will then divert your efforts into doing something else. Like, it's kind of a little bit like playing an MMO, but an offline MMO. You can do whatever you want, and on your way to do what you want, you may end up doing something totally different. And I love that aspect of it, that it's not just to be doing this, 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 and then it's just streamlined, and it gets boring for me. 
unless the story is amazingly good. Those like corridor shooters and stuff like that, they get massively boring for me. And I just want to, when I fall asleep, I need videos in the background to keep me uh, afloat and, and, and awake playing them because when they are, when everything is laid out in front of you, unless the storytelling is like amazing, like Bioware games and stuff like that, you can kind of fucking guess what's going to happen. Yes, I'm the big guy or girl with big fucking guns that are shooting everyone in the face and I'm saving the world. It's laid out for you. In, in games like this, yeah, there is the, the, the main story of it, but there's also two separate stories and there's random missions and, you know, there's the whole police randomness popping up where you have to help the police and stuff like that or you can just go around killing fucking people in the face and getting you know um wanted by the police it is gta in the future i don't like gta but i like cyberpunk and sci-fi so maybe that's why destroy all humans do i need to say more deus ex i am a massive deus ex fan i i fucking love deus ex so i have all the deus ex i think i have all the deus ex games uh, on steam divinity is a really good game i just haven't really sunk the time required into it it's one of those games where you can spend 10 hours and not going out of the fucking starting area uh, doom 3 i i I love this game. I need to replay it again. Uh, Dragon's Dogma, a really, really good RPG game. Skyrim, Skyrim Special Edition. Elite Dangerous, talked about that. Imperium Galactic Survival. And to me, this is what Star Citizen, or well, not Star Citizen, but this is uh, No Man's Sky is done right. It's, it's if you take uh, No Man's Sky with more and better craft and better multiplayer. It's an amazing underrated game. Your truck simulator, apply what I said about American truck simulator. Evil Land. If you want to throw back to like how the evolution of gaming, you basically start out like in really, really simple gaming terms. And then you go into like the little bit of the final fantasies of the old. And you basically just evolve up to like Nintendo 64 kind of things. And you end up in a full blown, you know, modern gaming experience. And there's a, a, a version two that I need to get my head around and play that. It's a really fun little game and it's really well done and I, I, I love it. I, I haven't finished it. I should. Actually, I'm going to install it because I want to finish this game. There you go. It's downloading while we're talking. I, I want I want to finish it because it's a really good game in of itself, but it's also taking you a little bit of down the path of the history of gaming. Factorio, I love it. I, I, everything about Factorio, I love it. I, again, it's a management building game, construction game, and with the mod support it has, I can... if. It's one of those games that if the, if this was the only game that I could play for the rest of my life, I would not be disappointed. Fallout 4, again, do I need to say more? Final Fantasy Online. Creed Fall is one of those uh, NDS games that's actually really, really, really good. Queen Hell, we talk about Quim Dawn or Quim, Quim Dawn. It's like the spiritual successor to Diablo 2. That's how we should look at it. Uh, Headspace, Shipbreaker, it's just one of those games that if you're tired or tired of the kids, tired of the wife, you know, tired from work, listen to some music, chillax with a beer in your hand and go fucking cut some ships to pieces. Hotline Miami. I, if you don't know what these games are, they have amazing fucking story, amazing music, like the 80s vibe and an amazing roguelike experience. Hunt World is a game that I have kept my eyes on but it seems to be dead or kind of dead right now uh what do we have here kingdom don't come kingdom come deliverance one of the best medieval games ever kingdoms and castles again goes into my building thing in Meduski that i like uh, management games lawn mowing simulator it's one of those games when you hear it and see it you're like this is not going to be fun but if you just want again like with shipbreaker it's it's a chill game you just sit there and you lawn mourns lawns you watch youtube you get a coffee you know Twink your Linux nerd sears. And you get better equipment, you unlock better, bigger uh, fields to cut and, and stuff like that. It's really, uh, I like games like this once in a while. Sometimes I just want to be entertained or, or to, to do something where my brain is in idle mode and I'm not falling asleep. And this is what these kind of games are allowing me to do. Mafia 3, I haven't finished it, but when I started to playing it, it was like, yeah, this is actually a good game. Mass Effect, I, I don't know how many times I've, I, I've finished Mass Effect 1 and 2. The third one, I never finished the third one. I always come so close to finishing it. And then I just I just stop playing. I don't know what the fuck it is. But the first and second one, out of the three, the second one is by far my favorite. I love the first one, but the second one is just... Mwah. 
The third one is also good. I just feel that the third one was lagging a lot in the story department. Metal Gear Solid, The Phantom Pain. I love that game, like the soundtrack and, you know, back to the 80s. It's the only Metal Gear game that I actually play. Metro Last Light, the Metro games are fucking amazing. Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. I loved that game when it came out. My Summer Kai has so, so much fun streams with this game. It's a fun little amazing game. New World we talked about, Northgard, a really, 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 really good game. Surrounded, like again, it's a city building or uh, tribe building management game around Vikings. So yeah, what's not to, not, not to like? Again, here, a management game, off-world trading company. Osiris New Dawn, this is being discontinued, but the atmosphere, of, uh, what I like about this game, again, it's a survival game. So. Open world survival games and management games, I do like them. I don't, again, I don't like it when you mix survival and management together too much with Scum and to some extent they see. But open world survival games for themselves and then management games for themselves, I do like that. I do like open world survival games with a little bit of management. I don't like when you have to micromanage. The, the, my, my life and uh, philosophy in life is you should not have to micromanage. When, when, when I, uh, example, like if I'm working with other people, and let's say I'm in control of the project and stuff like that. And it has like separate two different things under it that needs to be done. I find one person, okay, you take those five guys, you are in control that they are doing the, the job correctly so we can do the project. And I do the same with the other, you know, the other thing that needs to be done. So we have one guy, two guys, one guy each that control five guys. That means that I don't have to make sure that what those 10 guys are doing individually. I just go talk to those two guys and say, how is your team doing? What is your team? You know, how's the process? And if they, one of those two guys is not doing the correct job, you find someone else to manage the other five guys for you. Because you can't micromanage everything yourself. It would be fucking too... It, it, you just can't. And it's too stressful. And that's what, again, that's my problem with, with Scum to some extent, is that if you were, uh, you know, managing a team, they want you to manage every fucking thing and know exactly, you know what's going on, but you don't delegate responsibility. And I think that's really important to do, but you have to find the right people to delegate the responsibility to, because you cannot be the sole fucking controlling factor of everything. I've seen too many projects and, 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 and workplace I've been involved with where the, 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 the floor manager or the boss they wanted to know everything about every like every de detail about everything and it's doable if you're only working with two three four five guys the more people you introduce into that environment the more unobtainable it becomes and it always end up with company project whatever is going to be done it's not going to be done correctly because they don't delegate responsibility and this game and 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 other open world games that I like to play, they either don't have the management aspect of it, or if they do have the management aspect of it, it's you don't micromanagement. I it's, I honestly believe that micromanagement is the worst thing in the world. If I if I work for someone and they are a micromanager, I don't like that. Trust me to do my job, and if I don't do it correctly, we can have a talk about it. But trust me to do my job correctly, and then I can micromanage myself to do my job as well as I can. If that's not good enough for you, find someone else to do it. I don't need you to stand on top of me and making sure that I took my five minute break and I got my pee break and did it, did, it, did you get enough fucking protein in your body to do this work today? Let me deal with that, you know. Uh, but yeah, this little side rant here. Oxygen not included. <laughs> I love that game. So I, I have too many games, man. I, I want to play this more. Planet Base again. It's a management new city building game in space. Planet Side. I used to play this a lot with some friends when it came out. It was uh, so much fun. Prison Architects. If you don't know what this is, this is one of those games that you just have to have in your life. Right? Project Cars. I love driving games. Not as much anymore, but I used to as a kid, and I also used to do it with you know steering wheels and everything like that. But um, I still play it once in a while you know driving games rally games formula one games but not as much as i used to we have talked about some void the red saltis is a real it's a really really good my headset just went off because it was inactive it's a really really good indie game i just like everything about it, it it's in space and you go around and doing all of these amazing battles and there's a bit of management in it but again you're not micromanaging that, that, that's pro that's kind of the the underlying thing about everything with me i guess rim world again a management team but you don't go on all micromanaging things rise to ruin is an amazing city building game godlike game where you're kind of this guard 
is figure that are menacing a society that's coming up and you can do magical stuff with them and stuff like that and i think it's been done by one man again this is probably one of those games where i'm like if you're a gamer you should have this game and it's not really that expensive it tends to to be often on uh, on sale yeah like now it's 50 percent off and you it's it's a really really good game and if you like management games and, and like to kind of play god a little bit you can really really get sucked into it we have talked we have talked about uh, rocksmith shadow warriors 2 i'm playing the third one on on game pass right now it's a fun fucking game space engineers i love those games these kind of games going again survival crafting games it's amazing and i used to i used to play or uh, used to have a, a live stream it a lot and i have a lot of videos on my gaming channel where i play space engineers they are old but i i love space engineers and the fact that you can mod it as much as you can is a really bonus for me and it, it much helps extend the gameplay like if you think about it space engineers or maybe not space engineers, but american truck and european truck simulator it's the modding community keeping those games alive no doubt about it and they are the same with minecraft it's the modding community in a lot of instances spec off the line i love this game because it shows you how things really fucking is you are making decisions in this game that real fucking warriors have to make in life that is not oh i'm the fucking big motherfucking badass person going out here and saving the world at some point in this game you are ha going to make a decision that means that innocent people it's not that fortunate it's just about how much of that i don't want to spoil it but it's making you make a lot of uncomfortable choices or some uncomfortable choice and it got really flagged for that because when you see like call of duty even call of duty and stuff like that they romanticize war into being this you know you're this badass operator going in and you were like the hero of the fucking world and you were like holier than now and yes you get maybe beat up a little bit but you have like the moral compass of a fucking saint and the patience of a saint you're basically a guard in a fucking operator e equipment that's not how it is sometimes you fuck up in war sometimes you have to do stuff that it's not morally correct but legally fucking allowed for the sake of your teammates it's either you do this or you die you know either you drive over this person that could have a, a vest on that could kill you but this person looks really innocent and then you stop up and well you're blown up to pieces because they are using innocent looking people to get you to stop and look at them so they can blow you up and that's kind of what this game gave you or give you it gives you that a little bit of a a, a a view into the world is not black and white and especially for soldiers it's not just like this is like everything is for the right cause and everything is morally correct and i can sleep well at night why the fuck do you think there's so many you know operators and soldiers when they come home they are mentally fucking bad shit fucking crazy it's because that's what war does to people it's not pretty and this game shows you that and it got a lot of flag for it. Stellaris, again, a space, uh, uh, for, what is it called? 4X game, you know, building a society in space. And I love to play this because you can get a Star Trek mod for it. A really, really good Star Trek mod where you basically being the Federation and then expanding into space. Again, I need to fucking play that again. Stranded Deep, survival game. Subnautica, I almost finished this game. And... I got killed by a big fucking fish 100 meters away from my finishing destination where the finishing act started to start. I got so pissed I uninstalled it because it would take me like three or four hours to build enough resources, to build enough machinery to get back to that fucking point. I may come back to it in like a month or so. This has happened like last month or something like that. But it's a, a may if you just go into it and be like, I don't want to finish the storyline. It's an amazing story in it. You just want to play it for the base building and relaxing and swimming around and you know eating fishies here and there it's it's a really it can be a really relaxing and soothing game surviving mars another management play, uh, game the technomancer a really 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 good indie rpg terminator resistance one of the best if not the best terminator game ever made two point hospital another you know management game valheim i don't think i need to say anything about valheim vanquish a really really good shooter game older shooter game warframe not playing it so much as i used to but it's a, 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 you should experience warframe at least once the witcher the, the third one i have all witcher games but the third one is by far my favorite the witcher game x4 foundation uh space exploration game it's actually a really really good like um 
It's not totally what Star Citizen is, but it's like Star Citizen with better crafting. It, well, Star Citizen is a fucking mess, but it kind of gives you a taste of what Star Citizen is meant to be, like a taste. So that's my favorite. So some of these would go, of course, be also in the other games down there. So bad games, games that are just no fucking way. Alien Cannon on Marines. It's a joke to game. Fishing, Bearing and Sea. Lord of the Fallen. I don't like this game at all. Uh, Rise, Son of Rome. Ship Simulator Extreme. I might as well just put my fucking balls in a vice. VRC4. This specific version of this rally game is awfully bad. The same Expand Rally. Really, 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 really bad. These are the games that I have completed, which could be another interesting area. So if you like side, you know, good old side scrolling games, this is amazing. And it's not, it don't take that long to complete. And it's not that expensive. It took me like 100 minutes to complete it. <laughs> That's the completion time of the game. 100 minutes. And it's, it's a throwback to the 90s and 80s. Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown. I l used to be massive into aviation and stuff like that so this kind of took me a little bit back to that and then of course we have the batman arkham series i love those i love them even the bad ones bioshock infinite had some controversies controversies going on with it but i like games that are controversial because again why are they controversial because they're showing you how things either was or really is but we don't like talking about and why was this controversial well there was some kind of racist shit going on in the game but that's the time setting of the game and this is you know more more importantly the society setting of the game you know the society this game is modeled on they were racists so why fucking you know panda over it it's not comfortable but it's not meant to be comfortable it's meant to confront you with history it's meant to confront you with this is not okay and i like games like that and then of course we have black maze again borderlands 2 is probably the best borderlands the third one i have it on on uh what is it called epic store i haven't played it yet with all the controversy going on and the ceo having fucking cp on his stick uh, thumbstick and stuff no fucking way Call of Duty, I do like my Call of Duties, but I like them. I like the multiplayer of them, of course, but I also like the stories because it's one of the few games where the story is so good that it, it takes away from that corridor shooting aspect of it. I, I do like the Call of Duty story, stories. They're really, really good, but I also used to play it a lot. I'm, I used to be a Battlefield guy, but Battlefield is totally went off the fucking Vogue deep end and bending fucking reality and history just to fit a narrative of wokeness and the... the Every fucking year they release a Battlefield release. It's just worse and worse. Like, they used to be kind of box, then a little bit more box, then, oh, this is not on, this is not playable, or almost not playable, so this is definitely not playable, and they are taking years to fix it. Like, that, I just, the, the whole way that, that DICE is doing development and, and their philosophies and things, it's like they are giving us the middle fucking finger every time, and we're just eating it up. We're just sucking their fucking cocks and saying, yes, man, yes, man. Um, where Call of Duty, yeah, they are doing a little bit of that also, but at least they are not as fucking bad. Call of Yasuo Gunslinger, this is an amazing fucking game. And I think I finished it in six hours, to not be a mistake. Crisis, everyone should fucking play Crisis. Deadpool, you cannot get this game on Steam anymore. And I don't, I can't remember why, you see it's not on the store page, but it's fucking amazing. It's so fucking funny. Destiny, I haven't finished the DLCs for Destiny. This is just a Destiny main game. I, I, I started to feel like Destiny, they cared more about siphoning money out of you than actually making good story games and stuff like that. So I stopped playing it. Deus Ex, we talked about Dishonored, the first one. I, I, an amazing game. It's one of those games you have to play them. Doom... Of course, Doom, Dragon Age Origins. This is one of the few games. I bought this when I had a PS3. And it's one of the few games where I, when I got it, I played it till I was finished over a weekend. I got it a Friday and I didn't leave my fucking apartment until Sunday or Monday when I was done playing it. The same was with, with Mass Effect 1 and 2. I bought the games and I couldn't stop playing them the first time I bought them. Kind of, um, Bioware kind of do that to me with their storage setting and their games and stuff like that. I, 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 there are few games that they made, or, well, they're older games when they made those. I got hooked and I couldn't stop playing them. Most games are rarely finished, or it takes me months to finish them because I get bored of them or they get too predictable or all these kind of fucking things. But Tracking Age Origin was the first game I think that I ever played. Or either that or Mass Effect 1, where I installed it and I was like, shit, 
it's night outside, you know? I need to sleep. Four defense is a defense game. I do like my defense game. We have a couple of them down here. Tower defense game. The incredible uh, adventures of Van Helsing. Indie game, kind of like Diablo is kind of game. And they're actually really, really good. Injustice God Among Us is one of the few fighting games that I really like to play. Again, we have Mass Effect, Mass Effect. Portal 2 have some fond memories with this but portal 2 is also the game that will ruin friendships i lost a friend playing portal 2 because i didn't agree with some things that he did it took too long to finish a portal or something like that where the answer was right in front of us and i was like you just have to hit that thing up there and i'm smarter you and all that shit and then he stopped talking to me saints row do like me some saints row sniper elite i think i have all of them when you because the, the fourth one is on game pass I haven't played the fourth one yet. I need to do that. But they are... If you like sniping, they're really, really good. And you like the World War II experience. Supreme Commander 2. I used to own this game on a fucking physical CD back in the day. It's a strategy building game. It's amazing. It, it reminds me a little bit of the Dyson Sphere project. And some Clancy's Black... Uh, Spring the Cell Blacklist is an amazing game. Touchlight. Like Touchlight 1 and 2. An amazing game. Tower Wars. I think... Yeah, this is also a tower defense game. Towns... City management game, really, really old, not existing anymore, being developed anymore. But it is a really, really fun little game. Vanquist, talking about that, Vector Ran, Diablo is kind of thing that we have um, The Witcher. MMOs, you can just see what Lost Ark, Fallout, like, mm, Terror, Wildstar, you can kind of just pause and see those here. Uh, open gameplay, these are kind of the ones, the games that, you know, No Man's Sky of in here, I, uh, Scum. Terraria. Like, there's so so many games. I, I could go on and think it's getting too long in the tooth if I'm just sitting here and reading every fucking game that I have. Uh, okay games, games that I tried, that is like the Lego games. Uh, I never really loved the Lego games, but I never really hated them. Tower of Time is also really, really good. Um, Diablo kind of is game. Or okay, kind of, Alien Isolation is actually, it's actually a good game. I'm just not... Jump scares and stuff that just don't really do it for me. I'm, I'm getting bored over time. And then, of course, we have all the uncategorized games here again you can look me up on steam the real can and you can see on my list in there i have way too many games this is i don't you can see i think there's a way that you can see how long you have been having your steam account and i think i have mine for over 10 years now tested on linux i started to have the idea of making a series where i tested my steam library on on, on linux to see how well they played but i i went away with that really fast because i noticed that a lot of games required either a lot of tweaking or they were stuttering like fucking hell or they just didn't work so i kind of abandoned that that little uh escapade of of testing games on linux and make a series about that's why that's i need to basically just delete it but you can see here i have a lot of games and a lot of them is just not compatible with linux or, or i just get a better experience on the windows i understand if you only have 10 20 games in your library and all of those is working perfectly on the linux or free bsd or something like that I can totally understand and see why you would want to game on that system but when you have close to a thousand games in your library and you still from time to time pick even the some games i haven't played in 10 years i probably will install it to try it out at some point i kind of once every two months I, I go down my you know my stream libraries to see if there's any news so i click on this one here and then see what's happening here in in the pop-up here you know is there go anything going on here okay there's something happened in february bastion Anything new happened there? No, not really. Uh, what it, uh, Fear. Amazing games, by the way. This would be in my favorites also, to be honest. You know, I might as well try Fear 3 again because I really, really like the Fear games. It's one of those franchises where I really, really want to play them again, but time, you know. So I do this quite a lot, like Half-Life. I really, really need to play the Half-Life games again. Hitman, you know, I, I just go in here and see what, what's going on. Is anything happening here? Last Ventment, you know, um, Metro observer nuclear throne plane mechanics simulator last year they have an update pure rock climbing which i'm also going to install because that's also a really really good relaxed game you know what's going on with them so i do that like every two to three months i'm just going over and looking at it to see do i need this or should i do this or blah 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 and um it's getting hard when I do that on the Linux, when a lot of the games is just not up to stuff on Linux. Again, if you have a few select games that you play and you only play those games, awesome. But I like to play a lot of different games. I like to play 
all kind of games and 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 i may not i may only play them for like 30 minutes and then don't play them for a year or so and then i come back to them again i like that i like to have those options and still to this day even though it has gotten a lot better on the linux i still have issues with it on the linux which is really sad and it's, it's like you have two options you can either go with the it's good enough or you can go with it's the best i can get experience so for me a linux gaming on the linux a lot of times is i would say on average it's like okay this is good enough to be played on like i can definitely play it on linux it's a good enough experience but if i want as good as an experience as i, I can get on my hardware i have to go with windows and i have both installed so do i go with the it's good enough versus this is the best i can get so do I check the girl that is like, yeah, she's good enough, or, or oh my god, she's amazing. It's like probably the best fucking girl that I can get in, you know, I can land in my fucking life. Like, why the fuck does she want to talk to an idiot like me? And I have an option with both of them. Who the fuck do you think you're going to pursue? Well, the one that you really want, you know. You, you never settle for, oh, it's good enough. And if you don't have to settle for, oh, it's good enough, don't. Like I said, never settle for, oh, it's good enough. And that's my whole gaming on Linux kind of thing is that I always get this feeling that for most games, it's, it's a matter of, yes, it's good. Yes, I can game it on, uh, do it on the Linux. But it's still just, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's this feeling of it's only good enough. I know I'm just a reboot away of having a great experience. It's like watching a okay movie versus watching an amazing movie. And, and, and to me, being able to say that I'm on Linux is not worth that. It's not that worth it. it, it don't, it's not that, uh, that big of a value in my life, Linux as a brand. That I want to be okay with having lesser experiences to, to say that I'm doing something using a thing. No operating system has been like that for me. Not even Windows. If I if I had the opportunity to do something better that's better on the Linux, I do that. I, I do all my Python development. Well, not anymore, but I used to do all my Python development on the Linux only. It's by far the best development tool, in my opinion, unless you are developing for Windows, which is why I'm not doing it anymore on the uh, Linux, because at my job, they use Windows machines and the tools that I want to make to make my life easier on the Windows. Well, it makes sense to you know, build the tools on the system that the tools are meant to be used on so you can easily test them. So I'm doing development or making building tools and scripts. For Windows, it makes no sense to build them on the Linux to then go and boot into a VM to test them on the Windows. You build them on the, on the you know, you build them on the system that you that those tools are meant to be used on. So so I'm, I'm doing more PowerShell scripting and stuff like that versus bash scripting because the bash scripting was for my personal Linux life and stuff like that now that the, the PowerShell scripting is for work. Work. And again, you know, they use Windows, so it makes sense to code more or code on the system that the tools are meant to be used on. So it, it, it's it's weird for me that people are willing to sacrifice just to put that token or, or, or can use that 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 saying, that sentence. I use Linux. I hate Windows and stuff like that. It, it, I don't. I don't. I cannot understand why that is more important why, why use a lesser tool when you have better tools available why do python coding on windows when you're doing projects for linux use linux man you know boot into your linux vm and code your fucking tools that are meant to be run on linux in linux it makes no sense to me all of those people that oh i will only use mac os and i will only use this and then they're coding software for other operating systems it makes no sense to me it's it's unlogical it just don't make sense and it's the same with gaming now, now we're looking at my steam library here and i'm like fuck it man i i wish i could just in, uh, install steam on linux and everything just worked flawlessly out of the box i didn't have to go and find Glorious Eggrolls fucking Proton Interpreter or some other Protons or switching between Proton versions between what games I'm playing. Every game just fucking works as it does on the Windows with the same fucking version of Proton. And that's what I think they are missing is that, oh, I want to play this game. Okay, you have to use Proton version this or I have to use an external Proton version. Oh, I want to use play this game. Now I have to use a different Proton version. Oh, I want to play this. Now I need to play the, use the beta version of proton i want to play this now i have to use some special fucking launch commands and using a fucking fourth party proton version all of that just don't make sense to me when when people are, are this is how at least from being a gamer for, for almost 40 years 
has shown me is that when people are going to game, they don't want to tinker. They want to tinker one or two times, and we not want to tinker that much. Because what, what people, we like, the, the most amount of tinkering people want to do with their games is, let's see if I can find one, uh, let's see, American Truck Simulator. It's going into the workshop, you know, and, and click install add-on or going on to an add-on site and import that into a fucking folder that's the extent that they want to tinker because the, the main focus is playing the game it's not making sure that they can play in the game they just want to, okay i want this mod click add and then it's automatically installing or go on to a website site downloading it and transporting it into a mod folder and then start up the game and pop your uncle everything is working or using a mod launcher or something like that that's the extent that they want to tinker. And again, I'm talking for 30 plus years experience being a game and being a part of the game community. I rarely hear people, oh my God, this new game came out. I can't wait to tinker with it. So make sure that, you know, I get X, Y, and Z to work. And I hope it's not working. So I have to tinker with my computers again to work. I don't think everyone, nobody will be saying that when they're going to game. They really just want to be able to click game, download, and play. And I know a lot of games on the Linux as is like that nowadays and more and more games are becoming like that and it's amazing i just happen to play games but that's not the case and that's okay that's just it just means that i can't game on the linux but that don't mean you should not and it also don't mean that you should be angry because i can't why should you i've been told this don't play this game then okay <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you i paid money for the game i enjoy it immensely it gives me good Great joy and relaxation in my life. Well, sometimes not relaxation if I'm getting bad shit crazy angry in it. But it gives me joy in my life. And you were like, don't play it because Linux Pro. It just don't compute in my brain. It really don't. That, that mentality just don't compute in my brain. It really, it, it's really backwards thinking. Oh, this is not working. A thing that you really enjoy, you spend money on. Oh, it's more important to say that you're a Linux user. No, it's not. Like, no, no software is that important. I prefer some systems over or that. Actually, uh, it sounds weird, but I do prefer Linux over Windows. I really do. I wish the, the world was turned around and Linux was Windows and Windows was Linux. I would be happy with that. But that's just my personal preference. I'm, I don't give a fuck about Linux in the grand scheme of my day to day. I don't care about that I'm working with Windows machines that work. I wouldn't care if it was Mac or Linux machines. Honestly, I did. I don't give a fuck. I would just do my work. It's it's technology. It's interesting. The things I do is interesting. If they are, no matter what system they'll be done on, I don't give a fuck. I just adapt to the situation then. Because the, the job in of itself is interesting. What they're using as always couldn't bother me less. And, and, and to be honest, the only reason why I'm, I'm this big of a component for Windows at the moment is that it's giving me the best experience right now as a desktop operating system. Maybe in five years, that's not the case. Maybe in two years, that's not the case. Right now, Windows is giving me the best desktop experience with the things I do. I may in five years, two years, three years being like, you know what? I don't want to game anymore. Or I don't care that much about gaming anymore. I don't care that much about my peripherals anymore. You know, I don't care so much about the extra features in my peripherals and stuff like that so i just buy you know the basics of everything then i may switch to linux full time like i did in the past you know when when i didn't game that much when i was taking my education and i was it was all about girls and partying and all that stuff you know gaming i almost didn't game at all or if i did it was like solitaire and you know the odd little racing game here and there yeah i could definitely play linux like the linux game we had back in the 2000s to 2010s they were enough for me you know super tox card and all of that shit that was enough for me to, to satisfy my gaming it's back then but then i get more and more back into gaming in the 10 2010s and up and then Linux just didn't cut it anymore and still don't. And it's all about, you know, it's the same, it's it's all about your needs. What do you need? What do you want? What are we doing here? And and no system should be, you should not be ride and die on a piece of software. Because Windows could go away tomorrow. It's unlikely, but it could. So could Mac OS and Linux. What are you going to do then? Something could happen in the next couple of years where it, it, it drastically fucking upset the whole ecosystem of computing where mac os windows and linux they just don't make sense for anything anymore we are talking something totally different totally different systems and stuff like that what are you going to do then what if steam what if epic store tomorrow makes some features or do something that makes steam irrelevant and and steam then the next year after that goes under because it can't sell any games anymore 
Who cares about Proton at that point? Who cares about the Steam Deck at that point? You get what I'm saying here? You cannot be ride or die, a ride and die on, on a piece of software because they will change. They will, you know, they, they will morph. They will change priorities. They, 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 it will never stay the same. And, 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 and in, in reality, it's the internet, it, it, it's technology, it's it's bits and bobs, you know, ones and zeros, you know, it has no meaning in your day-to-day -day life, other than if it's paying your fucking bills and mortgages. Of course, it has a meaning then. But if you're just sitting and you're fucking on your fat ass on a chair, my life is not going to change no matter what operating system I, I'm going to run. I'm not getting slimmer, younger, faster, stronger or anything like that by running whatever fucking software. I have to go to the gym to do that. It, it can't, Linux or software, gaming, games, gaming consoles will not make your life better or worse. They just won't. So why the fuck are we putting so much, you know, importance on what games you are playing, what systems you are using? Oh, are you an AMD and Intel guy? Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Oh, you do know you can play this game on the Linux? Yeah, but it plays better on the Windows. So why should I play it on the Linux? Oh, because of Linux. Well, fuck you then. Like, it don't matter. It just don't matter. I never understood that mentality that something that has the least amount of impact in your life is becoming the most important thing or one of the most important things in your life. It's It feels a little bit like you're being defeated that you have no control over any other thing in your life, but you have control over something that is really insignificant to your life, the operating system and software that you install, that you can control. And that may be the only control that you have in your life. So that becomes the most important thing in your life. That just tells me that you have some fucking things to be worked out in your life if that's the case. If that's the only thing that you can control in your life is what operating system or software or games you're playing is. Because it's one of those things that are not going to impact your life whatsoever. Or at most it's going to impact you in the way that you, you feel just like 0.0.1% more happy. You know, it makes you laugh a little bit more or smile a little bit more, which is a good thing, but it's not, there's other ways you can get those feelings and get those reactions that is way more productive and conductive to your life. So it's just, it's mental. It's almost like looking at it as a, in form of a mental illness. There's no rationale behind a lot of those things. And, and, and the rationale that you get from why, oh, you should only be, don't play Call of Duty, play Battlefield. Why? And then they come with all kind of crazy fucking shit that it's not really rational shit. It all comes down to it's just because I like it better. And that's the the whole debate about Linux versus Windows comes down to it's just because I like it better. And then they use facts that is not really facts, but opinions as facts. Or, oh, Microsoft is bad, therefore Windows is bad and telemetry and blah, 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 blah. When it comes down to I just like Linux better than Windows. Or I don't, I like telemetry or I don't mind telemetry and I do. You know, that's all it comes down to. It's all it fucking comes down to, peeps. My, my brother is a massive PS fan. He loves PlayStation. I had two PlayStations in my life and one Xbox. I'm actually debating about getting an uh, Xbox again. I just prefer the Xbox, to be honest. And the only reason I bought PlayStations those times, the first one was the first ever PlayStation. The second time, the PlayStation 3 was because he had one and I wanted to play with him. But I didn't particularly like it. I just liked the, the, the Xbox controller better. I liked the ecosystem of the Xbox. I like how the Xbox ecosystem transfer over to the PC ecosystem. So if I should get a console, I would probably get a PlayStation. Oh, sorry, a <laughs> PlayStation. An Xbox, because it just what I like. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. I could say, oh, it's because I have Game Pass and it's transferred over to, to PC. But that's what I like. If you don't have a PC at all, it's not a a, a, a vector of of consideration in your decision making. You know, it's not something that you think about when you're making that decision. But yeah, all of this like craziness that's going on with Linux, and it is crazy. I like Richard Stallman is a fucking lunatic. The, I used to fucking adore him. I I used to be the biggest Richard Stallman and Linus fan. And the older I get, the more experience I get with anything having to do with social life, the more crazy he seems to be. The more grown up you become, the more childish and batshit crazy which a storeman seems to be. And it makes sense that a lot of immature fucking people like him, because most of the people that I've seen that are... are fan of Richard Stallman are immature people or young people because he is charismatic. He say a lot of fucking right th stuff. You know, there's a fine line between being smart and crazy. 
he just went too much over in the crazy camp. But yeah, anyway, a little bit of a talk about everything, you know, Steam games, gaming, Linux. Is this something I should do more of? I don't fucking know. Like, like I said, I don't like specifically like just sitting here and play, playing around and, and talking for this long just by myself. I do like to have people on, you know, why we have this space over here. It's basically for other people to be part of it in some way or shape or form. If you have any ideas of people that you think might be interesting in doing a little bit of a talky talk with me, let me know down below. And uh, most is just to have fun. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you all later. Bye bye.